clear on exactly what the problem is so that we can hold the government accountable has become extremely difficult. And to be honest with you, the oversight function, the oversight responsibility of the Congress, particularly the House, they have fallen flat on their faces. Uh, they have some good people. Uh, Chaffetz, who heads the House uh, Oversight Committee, is good. He's aggressive. He's smart. Yet the leadership has not seen fit to give him the power that he really needs to get to the bottom of these sure. uh, investigations. What's the inside baseball on Benghazi? I mean, I, I know my perspective on it and, and my access, which has been proven to be pretty accurate. But, but, but overall, with what Obama's really trying to do, because I didn't buy this stuff seven years ago from the super far right. I'm more of a libertarian that Obama's a secret Muslim. He wants to destroy America. But, I mean, you look at Obamacare. You look at the open borders. You look at the Cloward and Piven strategy. You look at him financing the Muslim Brotherhood. You look at him with his cousin Odinga uh, and Kenya and, and the radicals. You look at what he's doing in ISIS. I, I mean, he really is a destabilization campaign that doesn't even help America. I'd be against an immoral destabilization campaign because I want us to have the moral high ground. But what about a destabilization campaign that also hurts us? I mean, they're doing things that only hurt us, and they're doing it too well. It can't just be ineptitude. I, I, I think you're, you're precisely on point. You just took the words right out of my mouth. Uh, the fact of the matter is one could be charitable uh, if these were isolated incidents uh, to claim that, well, this administration just doesn't understand the Middle East. They don't understand the nature of the enemy. Uh, they don't understand the, what governments are doing over in a part of the world far, far away. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, uh, it's been going on far too long. We see it in virtually every foreign policy arena in which our government has been operating and has to operate under this administration. Uh, it's far more important, far beyond simple ineptitude. They have an agenda. This administration has an agenda to rein America in to make it uh, no more powerful than other nations, the European Union, for example, uh, to put America in its place. This administration wants to put America in its place, which is not at the point of the spear, not at the top of the heap, but right there sort of in the middle, along with everyone else. I mean, it's a very insidious agenda, and it goes far beyond incompetence. Isn't there a name of that? I mean, if he wants to go work for China or somebody else and try to put America in its place, he could do that. But when you do that as the president, isn't that treason or sedition or subterfuge uh, undermining the country? I mean, isn't that what a foreign enemy would do? It, it, it certainly is what those who would do us harm uh, would like to see happen. And one could certainly put together a case that what uh, Obama is, is doing and has done uh, would be a classic example of how a foreign power, a, a foreign uh, uh, puppeteer, uh, would be controlling what's going on in this country. Uh, but uh, you know, we're never going to get to the bottom of it, uh, really, unless Congress does its job. This notion, as you mentioned at the beginning, that people are uh, afraid or unwilling to utter the word impeachment because, well, after all, Obama's a lame duck, uh, don't understand the problem or just don't have the guts or the background to tackle the problem. It doesn't matter whether a president is a lame duck or in the first day of his first term. If he or she commits uh, unconstitutional, unlawful acts, as this president has done, then Congress needs to inquire into it to hold them That's right, and that's why the Republican establishment didn't want you in and kept you out of Congress uh, by playing the Tea Party. Tea Party's great, but it can be played both ways. Folks, it'll be more sophisticated. When we come back, I want to get into impeachment, Obama's power grab, what you think we should do. I want to get into Liberty Guard. I want to get into the other work you're doing, trying to block all these cybersecurity power grabs. Bob Barr, bobbarr.org is our guest, libertyguard.org. Your questions or comments for Bob Barr as well, 800-259-9231, 800-259-9231. Stay with us. We'll be back. Your phone calls are coming up. Eric, Dwayne, Damien, Liberty, Luke, and others for Bob Barr. He's with Liberty Guard, libertyguard.org. There is a process in corruption throughout history where basically a population becomes broke back and where people just give in. And then that's why you see most of these third world countries that have resources are still in such hellish squalor because they have cultures based on conquest and on strong men, el jefes, not on 
innovation, not on trailblazing. And obviously, there's always a mix of those two type systems in any civilization. But when you start getting 10, 20, 30 percent conquest in your innovation, it will always, like cancer, take over the rest. We're going back to our guest uh, in a moment to discuss how we fight back against this, because believe me, Obama only accelerates the same things happening in Europe, the socialist consolidation, the power grabbing. And they're never met with any opposition that's sustained or widespread, so they just keep growing. And then Republicans get elected, and they go up there and basically get absorbed into all this. It's the same thing in Europe, folks. It is looking like the type of stuff we saw in the 30s and 40s. I mean, we're really going into a very nasty time in the climate politically, and a lot of elites, the Pentagon, Ministry of Defense, others admit that. The French socialist has declared an economic emergency. What does he think 90 and plus percent taxes are going to do? 101 percent on some groups. So that's all coming up as well with Bob Barr, bobbar.org as well. A lot of excellent stuff on his site. Folks, there are a lot of bad halogens, bromide, bromine, chlorine, fluoride in the water. I mean, even again, Harvard admits uh, high levels of fluoride is really bad for you. It fills up your glands. It really hurts you. Then you can't find the good halogen. What is it? Well, it's iodine. They used to put it in the salt. You can pull up mainstream news articles, you know, 15% IQ increase after a decade in the Midwest after they started putting iodine in the salt. But that was the cheap base iodine that doesn't even break down very well. We have, they've been taking it out since the 70s, we have the good deep earth source iodine. It turns blue on paper, not red. Iodine's not red, folks. When it breaks down, it's blue. That's what the real crystal looks like. Take a couple of drops of this in your water. Consult your physician first, but it has just been life-changing for me. You can read the rave reviews from third-party sites at InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsLife.com. We have it with colloidal silver, a great topical or internal, you know, obviously anti and anti uh, bacterial and viral silver bullet, colloidal silver, 30 parts per million. We're less than the stuff they sell at Whole Foods that's from the same manufacturer. Just to let you know, we private label it, so it's really high quality. That is half off right now it's regular price, so it's $9.95 when you get it with the X2 Deep Earth Crystal Based purest iodine you can find anywhere. It is the purest anyone has ever come up with. It actually comes in a gaseous form that is then injected into the organic palm oil base. That's a special that will end today. It will be gone tomorrow. Infowarsstore.com, Infowarslife.com, or call 888-253-3139. And then separately, we have a new shower filter in that has the best testing background ever by ProPure, the ProMax. And it's got a four-stage filter, really fast flow is why I like it. Cuts out hundreds of different chemicals and pathogens. Others, it reduces down to 99%. Uh, and it just came out. People love it. Infowarsstore.com, the Pro Pure Pro Max 10% off promo code WATER. So much of the toxins in the water you absorb through your skin and your lungs. This is a really important way to protect yourself and your family. And it makes your hair, obviously, a lot cleaner not having all the chlorine, all the great, you know, uh, great to have chlorine in there, it kills bacteria. The problem is then you're drinking it too. You know, it kills bacteria, you're drinking it. Not a good idea. You, do goldfish live in the tap water? No, they die. <laughs> Joe Perry, the rock star, sent me a, a text message about his uh, goldfish. They put them in the tap water there in Florida and they died. Not, not you know, not thinking. I mean, that's just an example. So InfoWarsStore.com. And, and folks make fun of us saying, you know, watch out with the tap water. Some cities have great tap water. Most places don't. Like Houston tap water, you can almost light on fire. Okay. Uh, Dallas tap water, I bringing horrible. They have all these PR pieces about it. Great. It's like, oh, conspiracy theorists say it's bad for you. Folks, the glyphosate's all of it. It's come out. You're nuts if you're not filtering your water. Okay. I'm done ranting about that. Going back to Bob Barr, sir, before we go to calls, uh, you've got the floor here to break down uh, your concerns. I know you've written about it. You know, as of constitutional lawyer, as a congressman, as a former prosecutor, federal prosecutor, what are we seeing with these executive orders? What should be done? What's the proper path for citizens? You know, A, what are Obama's crimes against the Constitution that warrant it? And then B, what do we do lobbying-wise as citizen uh, activists to, you know, to try to get the RNC to take action, to try to get Congress to take action? What do we do? I'm not sure that the RNC any more than the DNC will actually do anything. Uh, it's important to go directly to 
the members of Congress and the court system. I mean, we have three branches of government. We have a president and executive branch right now that believes uh, and who believes that he is is above the law uh, and has put in the uh, uh, position of the attorney general and enabler, uh, who uh, woman now, uh, similar to what her predecessor, Eric Holder, did, uh, basically to tell the president why you can continue to operate uh, without the consent of Congress in violation of what Congress and uh, the laws uh, are, uh, rather than an attorney general that uh, does their best to keep the president operating within the bounds of the law. So we're not going to get any help from the Department of Justice, obviously. So that leaves us with the Congress, which for many, many years has simply forgotten or deliberately abrogated its oversight responsibility uh, and the courts. So what the citizens need to do, one is to identify candidates uh, for the House, the Senate, and the president who actually have the courage and the understanding to step, stand up for the Constitution and will fight. Going back to your earlier question, a reason why I support Ted Cruz in, in, this, uh, in this election year. But uh, we also need to make sure that Congress re acquaints itself with its oversight responsibility. Uh, it is simply not doing that. Plus the fact, uh, Alex, as you know very well, uh, when I filed back in 1997, in November of 1997, the very first inquiry of impeachment, it's different from an article of impeachment. It's the first step that Congress should take and needs to take to determine whether or not there are legitimate grounds for an impeachment. I think there are, a lot of people think that there are, but I'm not calling on the Congress to jump ahead uh, and uh, do something that isn't called for, that the evidence isn't there, but simply to inquire into whether or not this president in, for example, uh, directing the Department of Justice uh, to ignore and the Department of uh, the uh, uh, Homeland Security uh, to simply ignore the laws on immigration and to enforce the laws that are on the books, uh, that, in fact, is not acting within the Constitution. The president is deliberately subverting the laws of this land. It's not that he simply has decided, well, in this particular case, I'm not going to have my attorney general prosecute a case. That's fine. That's prosecutorial discretion. But for a president to deliberately say we're not going to enforce the laws, we're going to operate contrary to the laws that Congress has passed in immigration, and I think we're going to see the same thing very shortly with regard to his executive actions uh, with regard to firearms. Uh, Congress has to step in because a lot of times if citizens just file action in the courts, the courts will say, well, you don't have standing. Uh, the issue isn't ripe or, or whatnot. We ought to continue to press these issues in court. But we need to demand that the Congress, particularly the House, stand up for its oversight responsibility. That's right. And we also have clips of him saying Hey, don't worry. Congress wouldn't act, so I changed the law. That's a close mm -hmm. quote. I mean, he said Congress didn't act, so I changed the law. Then uh, a week and a half ago, he said in his in his speech uh, before a press conference, he said Congress hasn't gotten in line on gun control, so I'm taking action. I mean, this is very Napoleonic. Uh, it is extremely uh, Hitlerian. Uh, I'm sorry, that's what it is. It, it is Führer-esque to have him doing this, have him saying this. It's surreal. It'd be one thing if he did it and claimed it was constitutional and he could do it because it you know, was rulemaking or whatever. He doesn't. He just says, I, they're not in line. I'm doing this. And uh, I changed the law. And then we have airplanes coming in every day. And occasionally it's in the news where 150 people land from Mexico, no IDs. And they say, don't even check them at customs. Just let them in. I, I, and, and, but then citizens, they're going to grope our genitals and put, you know, 10-year-old girls in naked body scanners. It's just... It's so transparent that it's to teach us to be slaves, to set up a federal bureaucracy, to create internal checkpoints, uh, to have the IRS say you can't fly outside a law if they feel like it. That they are affecting and, 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 and activating a, a naked tyranny while engaging in flagrant disregard of, of constitutional duties of the government. So uh, that's why I really wanted to get you in last year because you said then on the show, we have the clubs, that you believe there were impeachable offenses and that you were going to bring that forward. What does it take for one man or woman in Congress to do what you've done before? It takes guts. It takes simply standing up and filing a piece of paper called an inquiry of impeachment. 
Uh, I did that on November 5th of 1997. I remember the day very well. Didn't have a lot of 